So wait till omnes. Welcome to this video lesson on Capitulum Vicesimum Sextum, Chapter 26. Titulus Capituli S Daedalus et Icarus. Daedalus and Icarus. In pictura est puer nomine Icarus. Uh, in pictura est vir est pater filii Icari. Uh, pater est Daedalus. Pater Daedalus est Faber, uh, est homo qui um, multa facit. Et nunc. Quintus, non rex minos, teseum, cum Ariadna fugientem persecutus est. Okay, persecutus as two word, um, perfect passive, for deponent verb, persequor, we see in the margin, a persequi, the infinitive there, present act, active infinitive, looks passive, translates active, I guess you could say present deponent infinitive. So, didn't King Minos, non a Rex Minos, pursue, persecutus s, uh, Theseus fleeing with Ariadne, all right? And those fugientum there, the present participle with the nt in the stem, and Sira then says, Certe rex eos per sequicuipit. Certainly, the king began to pursue them. Said, Nawis tesei nimis celeris huit. But the ship of Theseus, Nawis tesei, was too swift. So, nimis is the adverb. You also sometimes see nimium from the same root. There is an adjective from that root as well, nimius aum. Uh, but all of them essentially mean too, exceedingly, excessively, something like that. So, but Theseus' ship was nimis celeris, too fast, too quick. Minos, quam quam, celeriter navigavit, minos, although he sailed quickly. Or another way you can do that is however quickly he sailed. Non tam celer fuit, was not so fast, quam teseus, as Theseus. Notice the Tom Quam working together, not so fast as, not as fast as Theseus. Neque eum consequi potuit, nor was he able to catch him, or to catch up with him, we might say. Um, so consequi is another uh, compound of sequor. Sequi is the infinitive from sequor, sequi, secutus sum, to follow. Per sequor, per sequi, we had up above to pursue or follow after. And consequi has that con root that indicates completion, as in the word complete, right? Um, and that, that indicates this is to follow through till you get to somebody, thus catch up with. So again, sequor, sequi, to follow, per sequor, to pursue or follow after, and consequor, to follow until you catch up with. All right. So, nor was he able to catch up with him. All right, and then in line six, tum rex iratus, then the king angry, or then the angry king, capit dadalum, uh, caught Daedalus, or seized Daedalus, qui filum confegerat, who had made the thread, and this is that thread that Ariadne gave, et Ariadnae dederat, and had given it to Ariadne, Ariadnae there is the dative singular. Eumque in labyrinthum includi usit, and he ordered him to be shut in the labyrinth. Now, in some other versions of this myth, most ancient myths have lots and lots of different versions, and not all of them still exist. In fact, probably I'm sure many versions um, that once existed no longer do. Um, but usually I'm used to him being shut in a tower, but here he's being shut in a labyrinth. I think the tower version is in Ovid. All right, so and he ordered him, all right, you sit aum, to be shut, includi, present passive infinitive, into the labyrinth. Unacum eius Icaro filio, along with Unacum, his son Icarus. All right, so this is the famous story of Daedalus and Icarus. And you might have guessed, if you ever heard anything about this before, and if you looked at the picture there, aha, they're going to make some wings. Daedalus is the most famous inventor in all of Greek mythology. Um, he's known for this. He's known for making the labyrinth. 
He has known it well. He made the thread right. Um, there's lots of stories about him. In one, he builds this giant bronze robot named Talos that guards the island of Crete. So there's a lot of stories about him and his inventions. All right, and then picking up again in line eight. Verum pater et filius, but the father and the son, mirabili modo, in a wonderful or amazing way, e labyrintho fugerunt, fled or escaped from the labyrinth. Cras tibi narabo de fuga eorum, tomorrow I will tell you about their flight. Hodie plus tempores ad narandum non habeo, today, hodie, I do not have non habeo, more, literally plus temporis is more of time. Temporis is a genitive of tempus temporis, right? And that is called a genitive of the whole or a partitive genitive. Whenever we say like some of this, some of that, enough of this, enough of that, nothing of, of one thing, nothing of another, or if we say seven of them, eight of that, those kinds of expressions with the of in English are called partitives. And in, in Latin, they can be done with like an ablative if you have something like X uh, septem out of seven, uh, which is kind of the equivalent of of seven if you're saying sum of seven, sum of the seven, or one of the seven, something like that. But also, especially with little words like plus, which means more, or minus, which means less, satis, that means enough, with these types of little expressions, we often just use a genitive case like this, plus temporis, more of time, literally. In English, we usually don't do that, or at least we don't always do it. So in English, it's frequent, uh, frequently better to just say more time instead of more of time. It just sounds more idiomatic in English. So today, I do not have, non habeo, more time, plus temporis, ad narandum to tell. Now, narandum does not look like an infinitive, which is how I just translated it in English. I said to tell. That's a purpose infinitive in English. Latin does not really allow purpose infinitives. The only exception to that would be some authors, if they are kind of mimicking Greek style, because mm -hmm. Greek did have purpose infinitives like we have in English. So instead, in Latin, to, to show purpose, we will often use in or odd plus um, the accusative of some type of verbal noun. And one of the most common verbal nouns uh, that is a noun with a verbal idea wrapped up in it is the gerund. And here we see the gerund narandum. This is the accusative case of the gerund. Um, and it's used after odd to show purpose here. So I could translate odd narandum for uh, telling or for the purpose of telling, for the sake of telling, or I could just say to tell, which is, again, it's a purpose infinitive. All right, so put it all together. Today, I do not have more time to tell or foretelling, meaning foretelling the story. Yam horam consumsi. I have already consumed an hour. I've already perhaps wasted an hour, spent an hour, in narando, in telling. Now, narando, you'll notice how that looks similar to narandum. This also is a gerund. So let me note now, narandum has the accusative ending, I pointed out. Narando has the ablative ending. And if you look at the um and the o endings, you might be able to guess that this is a second declension verbal noun. And in fact, it has four cases. Narandi is the genitive singular, narando dative, narandum accusative, and narando again ablative. It's essentially a neuter second declension verbal noun. And narando or narandum, you, you should be able to see that it has the characteristic a for naro narare being a first conjugation verb, and then you get the letters nd, and then you get the ending after that. So, narandi, genitive, narando, dative, narandum, accusative, narando, ablative. All right? So, gerund, verbal noun. All right, Quintus then says, Neque tempus melius consumere potuisti. Uh, nor could you consume or waste or spend your time better. Um, spend probably is a good way to do it here. Nor could you have... Um, yeah, because potuisti is perfect. Nor could you have uh, spent your time better. All right. 
No, no portet. It is not fitting. In media fabula finim narandi facre. To make an end of telling, that is to finish telling, in the middle of a story, in media fabula. Now, if you take a look at Narandi, maybe you can remember the forms I said and tell me what case of the gerund this would be. Hopefully you're thinking with the E ending, Narandi, that that is the second declension genitive singular. So that is in fact what it is. It's the genitive of the gerund formed in the same way as the other cases up above. All right, so it's not fitting to make an end of telling. That's the literal translation, to make an end of telling. But finem facere, to make an end of a thing, this is an idiom in Latin that often we would just do better in English to, to translate it as something like to finish telling, right? Okay. Quoniam, since maiorem pa fabulae partem iam narawisti, you have told narawisti, that's the perfect, again, just like potuisti up above, e isti it, second person singular, perfect active. Since you have already told, yam narawisti, the greater part of the story, maior impartem fabulae, you could also translate that maybe as the majority of the story, partem reliquam quoque narare debes, you ought, debes, to also tell, quoque narare, the remaining part, partem reliquam. Ego paratusum, I am prepared. Ad audiendum, for listening, or to listen, to do a purpose infinitive in English. And hopefully you're recognizing ad audiendum, that audiendum is this new type of gerund. And hopefully you can see also, with the um ending, that's the accusative form of the gerund, the verbal noun. Now, you'll note one thing here. You might have guessed that you would have audendum um, with an I-N-D, but what we actually have is audiendum with an I-E-N-D. So verbs that have an I-O in the first part, um, this would be third I-O verbs and fourth conjugation verbs. For example, copio, copere, third I-O, or audio, audire, dormio, dormire, which are fourth conjugation verbs. These type of verbs, when you make the gerund, as with the present active participle, like audiens, audientes, you get the IE right there in the stem. So, ad audiendum, gerund, accusative. Notice because of the verb, it, type of verb it is, we have IE in the gerund stem. So, I am prepared for listening or to listen. Ad hoc sura ergo inquit. To this, Sira says, therefore, ergo, quoniam tam cuprus es, since you are so desirous, ad indi, of listening. Now, to be so desirous of listening, obviously the idiom is a bit awkward in English, so we might want to make it smoother and say, since you are so desirous, uh, so eager, perhaps, to listen, right? That would be a better idiom in English. But audiendi, of course, with the long I ending, is the genitive form of the gerund in Latin. It's what's called an objective genitive uh, because the um, adjective cupidus has this verbal idea of desiring a thing. So what might have been, say, the direct object of the verb cupio, cupire, to want or desire, ends up becoming a genitive in this type of phrase in Latin. So that's why it's genitive. Um, so, since you are so desirous of hearing, reliquam fabulam tibi narabo, I will tell the rest of the story to you. Daedalus in labyrintho inclusus, Daedalus uh, enclosed or shut in his labyrinth, cum filo suo, along with his son, intra muros erabat, wandered inside the walls, nex exitum in veniere poterat, nor was he able to find the exit, et si ipse labyrinthum aerificaverat, even if he himself had built the labyrinth. <clears throat> so again here, I'm more used to a version of the story, I think from Ovid, where he's just shut in a tower, but here they're shut in the labyrinth, they can't get out, uh, they can't find the exit, 
because he made it so well that he's even stumped himself. Quoniam igitur, since therefore, ali ai wi ai klausai errant, klausai errant, two word form with the ERA, so that's your pluperfect passive. Since therefore, the other roads, other paths we might say here, klausai errant, had been closed, had been shut off. Ile wir audax, that audacious or that bold man, per aera effugere constituit was, uh, or had decided, not had decided, sorry, constituted is just perfect tense. That audacious man decided, established, efugere, to escape per aera, through the air. Now, aer is a Greek word, and it's used in Latin quite frequently. And if it were a Latin third declension, which it sometimes is declined as, it would be in the accusative aerem, with an E-M, right? But here, aera, it's being declined as a third declension Greek noun. And in Greek, third declension nouns in the accusative singular end in a short A sound, alpha in Greek, or, you know, A as we call it. So, aera, that ending there is a third declension accusative singular, through the air, per aera. Icarus autem, Icarus, however, Qui concilium patris ignorabat, who ignored concilium patris, the plan of his father, whom he concedit. I'm sorry, not ignored, rather, did not know. Occasionally, ignorabat can be ignored, but it's usually didn't know. All right, so Icarus, however, who was ignorant of or did not know his father's plan, whom he concedit, um, sat on the ground. Et fesusum inquit ambulando, and he says, inquit, I am tired, fesusum, fesus, de fesus, fatigatus, de fatigatus, lasus, all of these are words for tired or weary. So I am tired, he says, ambulando. Uh, we would say probably tired of walking. Um, which makes it sound like a genitive in English, but in Latin, what you're using there is a dative. I am tired out by walking. So sort of an ablative of means is how that's constructed in Latin. So I'm tired from walking. I'm tired by walking, tired out by walking. In hoc carcere, in this prison. Quim ipse nobis idefecaviste pater, this prison which... You yourself, ipse, have built, idificawiste, for us, nobis, father. Ipsi per nos, hinc effugere non possumus, we ourselves, ipsi, are not able, non possumus, to flee from here, effugere hinc, by ourselves, per nos. Nec quisquam, nos infugiendo juare potret, nor will anyone, and quisquam, the word for anyone here, uh, which you get by adding quam on the end of quis, you can do quid quam and add quam on the end of quid as well, and that would mean anything or something. This word for anyone, quisquam, is only going to be used after negatives, so notice it's following neque. All right, nor will anyone be able Notice poterit with the E-R-I is a future tense of the, um, the verb posum, to be able. Nor will anyone be able, uare, to help, us, nos, in fugiendo, in escaping. Ut te seum juvit Ariadna, as Ariadne helped Theseus. How longum tempus nobis relicum est ad vivendum? Um, so, how is a stronger alternative to known? Not at all a long time, no long time is left, relicum est, for us, nobis, ad vivendum, to live. Okay, and again, to live in English is what's called a purpose infinitive. In Latin, you'll notice that it's ad vivendum which is another of these odd plus the accusative gerund type phrases. There's not a lot of time left for us for living or to live. Nam kibus noster, 
for our food, pine consumptus est, has almost been spent or consumed, right? They've almost eaten it all up. Yam, uh, ego yam, pine mortusum, I now am almost dead. Boy, he is a ray of sunshine. Nisi dii nos yuabunt, unless the gods will help us, numquam we we hink egrediemur. We will never leave or depart egrediemur from here, hink, alive, we we. O di boni, O good gods, auxilium ferte nobis, bring us help. All right. Well, that gets us to the end of section one here, and we will pick up in another video lesson in section two. So I hope you learned a few things here about these new gerunds, uh, where you have the verbal root, and then the ND, and then the endings, E, O, UM, O, uh, from those different four cases, genitive, dative, accusative, and ablative. They're always neuter, they're always singular, and they're always second declension, okay? So, pretty easy to translate, usually with the ing, or you can do infinitives in some of these contexts. 